In computer science, and more generally when programming and coding, you might have heard of variables. In this video, we'll take a look at some types of variables and how they work, including a few examples in Scratch along the way. There are a few different types of variables that we're going to touch on today. This isn't an exhaustive list, but it will cover some of the most common types of variables that we could use with Scratch. The types we'll cover are booleans, integers, floats, strings, and lists. There'll be timestamps in the comments if you want to navigate between these. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain how all of these variable types are used and even use them while programming your own apps and games. The term variable in programming and computer science is a little bit different to how it's used in math. In math, a variable can represent any number, but in coding and computer science, a variable isn't just limited to numbers. They can hold all sorts of data. A good way to think of a variable is like a box that can contain different data. There can be many versions of the same box, so to tell them apart we give each of them a name. We can also change the data that's in each box using our code. Each type of variable holds a different form of data and requires a different type of box. For instance, string data just won't fit into a boolean box and vice versa. But this doesn't mean that they can't influence each other through some clever code. The important thing to remember is that what's contained in each box or variable can be changed by using the code and referred to later when we need it. In essence, a variable is a way to just store data for use later on. Let's take a look at some of these different types of variables. Booleans are data that are either true or false. Going back to our analogy, a boolean variable is a box that can only hold the information true or false. This can look like a checkbox that's either empty or ticked, the words true or false, or even a one or zero. Let's take a look at how these work in Scratch. In Scratch, when we're using booleans, we don't get to see the actual true or false statements. What we see are these little hexagonal blocks. These are our boolean blocks. Each of these is either true or false. So if we look at the key space pressed, if the key space is pressed, then it's true. If not, then it's false. And this is the output that it gives to our code. We use these if, if else, wait until, and repeat until blocks to help us control how we use our booleans. For more information on how we use these, check out our boolean video. The word integer is one we get from mathematics, which means a whole number. An integer can be any positive or negative number, including zero, but it can't be fractional or decimal. Going back to our boxes, an integer box only holds these whole numbers. With integers, we can use our code to do math, like adding or multiplying, making this a good data type for holding our scores, for example. To see some integers in action, check out our videos in Scratch by clicking the I icon above. A float is like an integer, but a float can hold fractional or decimal values as well as whole numbers. This means a float box can hold any number, much like a variable in math. Like integers, floats can be used to do math, but with the ability to use decimal places, they can be used for more precise roles. This makes floats useful for tasks like recording the position of sprites on the screen. In Scratch, integers and floats are handled in the same way. Let's quickly look at how that works. In Scratch to get to variables, we scroll down through the list of all the blocks, or we can click on the variables option on the side list here. Um, this takes us under the variables heading where we can see make a new variable. Um, we can also make a list down the bottom. And you've got five blocks here about variables. They relate to, at the moment, this variable called my variable, which I'm going to right click and rename to test. All right, this is my test variable. Uh, I can make a new variable by clicking up here. I can give it a name. Uh, you want to give it a name that makes sense for what it is. So if it's speed of an object, you give it speed. Or if it's score, you call it score. Um, you can decide if that's for all sprites or just for that sprite only, um, whichever sprite you've created it in. And then you can also decide if you want it to be a cloud variable. Um, this is only available to people that are scratches. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, check out our video on that topic. All right, we'll just close this off for now. Under test, we've got now um, a score of zero. And if I click this little box here, you can see test pops up over on this side. Up here, if I right click, I've got these options. I can use the normal layout, the large readout, or the slider readout. Um, now slider goes up in whole numbers. 
Um, but right now we're going to leave it at zero and go back to our normal layout there. On the left hand side here, we'll go again, we've got the uh, set test to whichever value we want. So I could set that to 100. Um, and if I click that, test is now at 100. That's what it's worth. I can also use this block here to change it by a smaller increment. So instead of setting it to a certain amount, I can just add to it, all right? And I can add to it positively by adding one each time. I can make that a negative one uh, and then I can take one away every time. Or I can also change this to a decimal. So zero point, let's say two, for instance. And I can add 0 0.2 to it until we're back at 100. Every time you do this, you can tell that you're changing uh, this variable up here. Um, but if you've got it hidden away, you can also see that it's um, able to be hidden and shown using your code. So using these blocks here, we can either show variable or we can hide the variable. And you might want to do this if you're doing something like a score that you only want to pop up uh, for so long every time the score updates, for instance. This is basically the full control set for our variables. Um, and as you can see, because we're using numbers and because we're using a decimal number, we're using floats here. Um, if you want to use an integer type uh, variable, you can basically just leave it at one. So as long as you don't reference a decimal, it'll be equivalent to being an integer. Um, you can also use blocks down here in the, the operators to do some simple math. So you can check if things are greater than or less than with our booleans, and you can also do the math operations here. Um, and you can use our variable circle here to add to that and help it make more complex problems um, that you can solve. So that's basically uh, float variables in Scratch. String is the name we give to variables that contain text. This includes letters, numbers, and special characters. A string box will hold any text that you can enter, but if you put a number into a string box, it can no longer be used for math, unless you turn it back into an integer or float by using some code. We use strings to hold names, sentences, and just about any other form of text that you can think of. Let's take a quick look. Much like when we were looking at our floats before, if we look at string variables in Scratch, we're using the exact same blocks. So under set test two, I'm going to change this from zero, which it is at the moment, to hello world. If I click on this now, hello world comes up in my test variable. This is what the variable is holding now. It's holding this string that says hello world. I can change it again by, you know, let's get rid of world and just say hello. Now my variable's changed to hello. Unfortunately, we can't do math to it. Uh, because Scratch handles all strings as though they've got the value of zero, uh, which means that we can't do any math there and add things on to the end of our hello. We can't do hello plus one, um, but that's something to consider and just remember while we're using our code. We use strings in variables for things where we want to record text. And often this is say recording someone's username or their name when we ask them what their name is in Scratch. Um, so we can record that as their high score or so that we can talk back to them using like a chat bot. So that's basically strings in Scratch. Lists are like a line of the same box in a row with each one holding some data. We use lists to hold several copies of a variable to use later on. An example of this is when we create a scoreboard and store the scores of each player as we go. We can also use lists to count copies of a variable or refer to a specific item from a set of data. Let's take a quick look. When we first start up Scratch, we can't actually see any lists. So we've got to go back to our variables menu um, and then under variables, you can see make a list. So I'm going to make a list and I'm going to call my list names because I'm going to store names in this list. I can make this list for all sprites or for this sprite only. I'm going to leave this one for all sprites um, and that's probably the best thing for you to do as well. Let's press OK. And now we've got a list called names. Now the first thing you'll notice is there's a bunch more blocks now on the left hand side here. And I've got this new list uh, 
object in my scratch stage. So let's quickly go through the different blocks and we'll talk about how they work. So here I've got this list. Again, I can turn it off and on for the stage. This allows me to turn the list on and off, all right? Basically to show what's in the list or hide what's in the list. Uh, I can also add things to my variable called names or my list called names. So if I click that, I can see thing is added. If I call Sam and I add Sam, I can add Sam as item two. Now I can delete certain items from my list. So if I delete number one of this list, it'll delete item one in my list, which is indexed up here. If I click this, now I've only got Sam, things has been deleted. Uh, I can now also delete all things in the list. I can insert thing at, at number one or at just another certain spot in the list. So if I hit thing, um, and now if instead of thing, I want to insert uh, James at number two, I can click here and insert James at number two. Um, and so you can play around with that and add different people in at different spots. Um, we can replace certain items. So if I thought, oh, actually I got James wrong, I can replace uh, number two with, let's call it Harry. Now if I click here, James is being replaced with Harry. I can also reference my list in a number of different ways. So I've got these little circular objects here, these little circular blocks. That allows me to interact with the different objects inside of this list. So a certain, uh, a certain object or a certain number in that list, or I can use the length of the list. So if you've got 100 objects, 100 things referenced in this list, I can count to 100. Um, or if my list contains a certain word, I can do something using uh, this Boolean block here. And then again, like my variable, I can hide and show my list. That's basically lists in Scratch. We'll get into more detail in a specific video uh, around lists and how they work. During this video, we've taken a good look at variables and how they work. We've also taken a closer look at a few different types of variables and used them in some simple examples. If you don't feel like you've quite got it, feel free to go back and watch some parts of the video again. When you feel comfortable with all of this knowledge, you'll be ready to use some variables in your own programming. If you feel like you've learned something, please hit like. And if you want to learn even more about programming and computer science, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.